Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Digging Deeper, moment number 64. The mission of our Digging Deeper moments is to take God's Word to God's world. We are so glad that you joined us. So far in our current study, we've been studying the subject of conflict resolution, and we've looked at steps one and two when a conflict emerges. First of all, we need to believe that conflict is curable. If we don't believe it's curable, we're not going to try to resolve it. The second thing, when a conflict emerges, we need to get out of bird brain. In other words, before you and I engage somebody else, we need to confront our emotions. The other day, my wife and I were on vacation and went to a particular hamburger place that we like in South Carolina, and we had expectations. The hamburger was good, the, the fries were good, but we ordered chocolate milkshakes. And the, I love a chocolate milkshake with my hamburgers and fries. Now, first of all, the, the, the milkshake didn't come out until our meal was over. And then when we got our milkshake, I ordered a chocolate shake. It didn't have any chocolate flavor at all, and I was really annoyed. I'm on vacation. I was paying It's a little bit more expensive down there to get the same thing because you're on vacation. And I was really annoyed, almost to the point where you could call it a little bit of anger. But I remembered the teachings that I'm trying to give to you that not to confront things when you're in bird brain. Because I knew if I confronted, because I could have taken the milkshake back and demanded them to do something with it. But I was afraid that if I did that, I was going to say some things that I would regret later. And so I didn't. I decided to just throw the milkshake away and leave the, the establishment. And so the point is, is that it's, it's when you get angry and when you get filled with emotion, because of a conflict, it's not a good time to engage in confrontation and try to resolve it. First, you have to get out of bird brain by confronting yourself. So, you believe it's curable, get out of bird brain. Now, the next thing to do is that we need to identify the stage our conflict is in. Now, for years, I did not realize that anger and conflict progresses in predictable stages. You know, when I would help, try to help people resolve conflict and resolve their anger, I just kind of took a one-dimensional approach. And over time, I learned that anger and conflict actually goes through predictable stages. And you have to figure out what stage your conflict is in in order to be able to apply the right remedy. Jesus alluded to this in Matthew 5, when he says of anger, he says, but I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. That's the local judgment local council. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. That's the Sanhedrin. That's the Supreme Court of Israel. And whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. I want you to notice that the consequences of this anger are escalating with each of these three stages. And so is what is happening. Jesus is trying to point out in that text is that anger has a tendency to escalate. It has a tendency to take on a life of its own and spiral downward. And so we have to be aware of the fact that when we get into a conflict and we get into bird brain and we begin to get emotionally stirred about something, the tendency is for it to continue down a spiraling staircase and produce some bad things. And so we have to be aware of how quickly that can happen. It's like we can get, we can get angered really pretty quick and have a conflict and go from the first stage to the last stage pretty quickly. It's not like it has to take time. And so I unpacked this scripture of Matthew 5.22 more fully in a sermon called The Escalator of Anger that I did on October 13th of 2019. And you can find that sermon on our website under the Sermons tab and the archives. And so I'd encourage you if you want more information on that text to, to do that. But anger and conflict has a tendency to escalate and go through predictable stages. Over 20 years ago, I, I was listening to a John Maxwell tape of the month Life Club lesson, and he was talking about the stages of conflict. This was a very eye-opening experience for me as I listened to Maxwell because it helped me tremendously to see that when I'm dealing with anger in my own life and conflict in my own life, and when I'm dealing with it with other people to help them resolve it, that it's a more than a one-dimensional approach. Now, in his lesson, John was specifically talking about conflict in the church. That's what he was teaching church leaders. But over the years, as I've, as I've applied what John has taught, I've learned that the stages of conflict are present in all types of conflict. And so we have to, res we have to be aware of these stages. They will help us to understand what to do in whatever particular stage we're in. Now, according to John Maxwell, the, the five stages of a conflict are, are first of all, the remedy stage. Now, at this stage, 
the goal is to fix the problem, is to fix the conflict, to fix whatever was the cause of the problem. And this stage is characterized by optimism and trust. People are getting along, they just have a conflict and the relationship's intact and it's fine. But if the conflict is not resolved at this stage, it will move to the second stage. And folks, this can happen pretty quickly, by the way. And so the second stage is the repositioning stage. In this stage, the focus shifts from solving the problem to self-protection. Trust begins to wane, and the problem becomes generalized. Okay? It begins to, we begin to move away from trying to resolve the problem or conflict that took place, and we begin to get very vague in our description of the conflict itself. Now, if the conflict is not resolved here at this stage, it will move to the next one, which is the rights stage. In this stage, parties feel they are right and have the moral high ground, and the other persons are wrong. People begin to speak in moral tones. And if you pay attention to what's happening in our culture today, there is a lot of moralizing going on in our culture. It seems like every issue that gets discussed on Facebook and on social media today has a moral tone to it. Folks, that's because we're in the right stage as a country. I got a right for this and a right for that. And we are not resolving conflict well in our culture in part because of this. Now, at this stage, people are labeled and sides are taken. Does that not sound familiar? We have left, right, you know, we have good, bad, we have this group of people, and, that, and we put labels. One thing I learned about labels a long time ago is when you start labeling people, you also start devaluing them. And so I try to avoid putting labels. I use labels like you do. I fall into the trap like you do, but I'm really becoming self-aware of the danger of labeling people because you immediately begin to devalue them or they're going to feel devalued nonetheless. Now, if the conflict is not resolved at this stage, it will move to the next stage, which is the removal stage. This is I want a divorce stage. At this stage, the focus is not on fixing the problem or, the conf or resolving the conflict, but on breaking the relationship. Now, if the conflict is not resolved here, it will move to the fifth and final stage, which is the revenge stage. In this stage, the focus shifts from breaking the relationship to someone must pay. The other person has to pay. This is revenge. This is Ahab going after Moby Dick. Now notice how with each stage, the focus shifts from resolving the conflict to something else. It goes from resolving the conflict to self-protection, from self-protection to winning, from winning to breaking the relationship, and from breaking the relationship to revenge. So if we are going to successfully resolve conflict, we're going to have to learn how to identify which stage we are in, and we're going to have to get back to the remedy stage. We're going to, get half, we're going to have to get back to the stage of the conflict where the focus is on resolving the conflict and fixing the problem that created it in the first place. So when a conflict arises, you first confront your anger. Why? so that you can enter the remedy stage. However, because we can move through these stages of conflict pretty quickly, it's important to, when you catch yourself is to ask yourself, what stage are you, are you in? Are you still in the remedy stage or have you moved to the other stages of conflict? And so when we figure out what stage of the conflict we're in, then we can apply the proper remedy. We can begin to address where we are in that stage. For instance, in the repositioning stage, you've got to get out of your emotions because we've actually returned to being in bird brain. We're being driven by our emotions. Our behavior is being driven, not chosen. And so what we have to do is we have to get out of our emotions so we can go back to the remedy stage, which is the focus is not on how we feel, but our focus is on how to resolve the problem. Now, if we're in, we find ourselves in the right stage, you have to get out of your emotions and secondly, you have to give up your rights. And then you have to focus on your responsibility, not your rights. This is what happens when we have a conflict emerge and we move from the remedy to the repositioning stage and we get in the right stage. Now we're saying, we have the moral high ground. We are right. You are wrong. And the focus is now being right, not resolving the conflict. You, we, you and I will not resolve conflict when we focus on our rights. And folks, let me just encourage you here is that is that we have to be very aware of this because we are living in a time in our nation's history where everybody seems to be focused on their rights 
instead of their responsibilities, and that's making conflict resolution even more difficult. And it's in the air around us, and so we have to be a little bit more diligent than we did in the past. Now, when we're in the removal stage, this is the fourth stage, so we've gone through the remedy stage, to the repositioning stage, to the right stage. Now we're in the removal stage. To, to fix that, we got to get out of our emotions. Notice how each one of these phases, we got to get out of our emotions. We got to get out of bird brain. We're back to that step. We have to give up our rights. We have to focus on our responsibilities. And then we have to focus on restoring the relationship instead of breaking it. Folks, there is a difference between focusing on how to get out of a relationship versus how to fix a relationship. And folks, that's a very important lesson for us all. And finally, if we're in the revenge stage, where we find ourselves wanting to get revenge, that we have become Ahab, and we are chasing Moby Dick all around the world to try to kill that whale, we got to get out of our emotions, we got to give up our rights, we have to begin to focus again on restoring the relationship, and we have to give up revenge, we got to get back to the remedy stage. And this is going to require something called forgiveness. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 4, 31 through 32, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now I want you to notice that I did not begin this conflict resolution series by saying first, the first thing to do is to forgive. Because, folks, there's other things we need to do. We need to, before we address forgiveness, we have, to, we have to know that conflict is curable. We have to get out of bird brain. We have to identify where we are in the process of the conflict ourselves. Only after we have addressed those things and looked at ourselves and dealt with our anger and our hurt can we begin the process, which is step number four, of forgiveness. And that's why next week we're going to look at the fourth step which is forgiveness, and we're going to look at what forgiveness is and what it, is and what it isn't. Because there's a lot of people that are confused, particularly Christ followers, that are confused about what forgiveness is and what it is not and the role that it plays in conflict resolution. And we'll take a look at that next week. So if this lesson has helped you, please share it with a friend, and I hope to see you next week. God bless.